Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit uh, leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And I would love to welcome a good friend of mine, Louise Montag. Hi, Louise. Hi, great to be here. And Louise, where are you? Who are you with? Yes. So I am lucky enough to be the director over at Prevention Network. We are a statewide agency, uh, nonprofit uh, that really uh, supports those who are doing the boots on the ground substance misuse prevention efforts. And so that can look like providing training, technical assistance, resources, um, that one-on-one support, whatever people might need uh, in order to uh, build healthy communities. Is that your mission? Because that's usually how we start. Is, it's what pretty is close. Mission? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I started that's... to go slightly off my mission and then I thought, well, I'm just going to stick with it. Because sometimes I think yeah, people can read the mission, um, but the catchy grab isn't always the mission verbatim. Right. Absolutely. So I kind of blended our mission and our vision together. Perfect. That works. That is typically how we start the show because the show is called Mission Control. So so it's about how you control that mission you set out for yourself. But before we get into your work with the Prevention Network, Mm -hmm. there's something that caught my eye when I was doing a little bit of research uh, on you. I want to start out with you receiving the Arthur Ashe Award. Ah. Yes. I want to know. I want to know this about Louise. That's okay. So it, and it kind of ties back into um, more about me and kind of why I got into this space as well. Perfect. So um, the, I was, let's see here. Um, When I was in middle school, high school, I grew up thinking, I want to grow up and be a doctor and not any doctor, but I wanted to work in the emergency department. And um, I wanted to be a, an ER physician, uh, got through, and I started taking uh, classes that aligned with that uh, and going to summer camps uh, and leadership summits that aligned with kind of that pre-med um, uh, pathway. And then in, in college, I uh, started off pre-med and I worked at a hospital, um, loved many aspects of it. But I saw a lot of people walking in the door who uh, were already struggling, whether it was a a substance use disorder, uh, a mental health problem, uh, or even just a a physical, a a physiological um, illness, heart attack, uh, stroke. Uh, We saw some, you know, a a whole range of of, uh, diagnoses. Um, I worked night shift, so I saw a little bit of everything. And uh, I really wanted to figure out, like, how can we stop so many people from coming in the door? Uh, The other thing is I was at the time I was a freshman in college, just trying to figure out um, my own path. Uh, I was a collegiate diver uh, in in doing sports uh, and I was struggling with my own mental health, uh, Mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, and I realized that uh, two, one, uh, or two things. Uh, first off, this is really hard work and, and, and mental health can impact physical health. Uh, and then second, that uh, I'm not alone in this. And so how can I kind of help others? And so that's kind of, at that point, my uh, mindset kind of shifted or uh, my, my passion shifted slightly in supporting those who are, are struggling um, with mental health problems uh, it, it, and kind of looking at the uh, psychological uh, and social components and how they impact physical health, which kind of led me to um, to uh, public health and in the public health field, which is kind of how I 
stumbled upon Prevention Network later and, and am now here. Uh, and I share all of that because uh, a lot of that time I, um, I was seeing a, a now well-known doctor in the area, uh, Larry Nassar, I'm a public survivor. Um, and I, um, all of that was happening around the same time. And I think that is part of why uh, my mindset shifted so strongly. Uh, and I'm now such a strong proponent of uh, public health prevention um, and, and really supporting um, that side of things rather than the uh, retroactive or tertiary uh, prevention um, and, and really helping people get better. I think that it's really admirable, those who are doctors. Um, I just didn't think that was necessarily my path. Uh, and so uh, in 2018, I came out more publicly as a survivor and I believe it was in 2019, uh, ESPN gave uh, the survivors the Arthur Ashe Award. So it's sitting down in uh, on the mantle, which happens to be in my husband's office. So he gets to promote it um, as if it were his. Um, but I do have that that award downstairs, which is kind of special. That's an incredible story. Um, I did not know one bit of that. I just saw Arthur Ashe Award and I thought that was quite incredible. And I don't know how that never came up in a conversation with us. Now I know why it's not, <laughs> it's not, now it, that, I mean, that, um, that is, uh, that is amazing. Um, and, and, uh, you know, now I see why, you know, uh, you are, you have that recognition due to the courage of you as well as the others um that went through that difficult time mm -hmm. um that was uh so so that was at the kind of at the front end of really getting into your career yeah um and you now i'm going to back up a little bit you know when you said that in in junior high going into high school that you were mm -hmm. really you wanted to be a doctor. What was the trigger to thinking about that, the health field in general? What was, what was your, mm. I always like to refer to it as, um, you know, your star Wars moment, because that's what got me into what I do is the movie as a little kid, <laughs> that, that kind of storytelling. Um, what was your star Wars moment? Why did you, why, why, why health? I love it. So I, I had always wanted to help people. Uh, and I think it was, I thought doctors help people. Uh, I had experienced that when family members had been, you know, needed help, whether it was in the hospital or outside of outpatient something. Uh, and, and I wanted to be, you know, that lifesaver. And I loved the high energy and change of pace, different. You're not seeing the same thing roll in every day. You don't know what's coming. Um, it was uh, like an adrenaline rush for me. And so I just, I thrive off of that uh, and I still do. Uh, and even before that, if we were to back up even further, uh, in, in elementary school, I think I wanted to be a teacher growing up. And, and that switched over when I was like, oh, the fast paced, exciting, fun emergency department. Um, but I think the teacher came from my mother is a, is a teacher and now a uh, teacher educator over at Oakland University. And uh, I think it was a lot of the, I really looked up to teachers and thought so highly of them. And I thought if I could teach people and I found that in in the field that I'm currently in and in public health, I could kind of blend some of those and I could teach others, especially in my role at Prevention Network, teaching others how to uh, support and, and lead the work that they're doing, as well as that that fast pace. There's something different all the time. Um, different things come up. We are, are always trying to combat um, different aspects of, of prevention and, and strategize and best practice. And so, uh, and I think there are more than one way, or there is more than one way to, to help people. Um, and we all kind of learn that as we, as we grow. And so I've fell in love with the, the position, but that's kind of how I've taken that past experience. And I, I think it, 
goes all back to just wanting to help people and support people. And so with that, you've, you know, like you said, like you mentioned before, um, actually, let me back up a little bit, a bit more <laughs> because, you know, you, you mentioned that you, uh, battled depression and anxiety, um, mm -hmm. uh, in school. How did that mesh with your love of fast paced, always action? Is it, do you, is mm -hmm. it the type of anxiety that you, that you, that you face versus, you know, high stress situations? Mm -hmm. That is a great question. And, um, I, I definitely, as for some reason, I thrive on a very full schedule. I thrive on the busyness. I thrive on the back-to-back um, -back meetings and change of pace. You know, you're talking to a staff about uh, a, a program, and then the very next minute, you're switching over to talk to a funder about something you know, that could be different. And then you are providing technical assistance on a completely different topic um, 30 minutes later. And so that that change of pace, um, my brain is, is gotten pretty good at switching over. And I like that. Um, I, I thrive on a, a little bit of chaos. Um, but I found that there is that my my threshold is, tends to be higher than most, but there is that tipping point and there's that fine line. I do really well up into that line. And then once I go over the line, then it it all goes, I don't know, it's like an explosion and that's not so great. So I try to stay like just under that, that threshold and that line for myself. Well, it's, it's, it is kind of interesting. Um, I, I'm the same way, but I don't, I don't think that I have anxiousness in that regard, but I don't know. I mean, maybe I do, maybe I, I, I don't know. Um, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I think that that's really, really interesting to me uh, yeah. that you thrive in those, in those environments. And uh, yeah, um, it doesn't surprise me at all. Now, we talked a little bit about the reason why you shifted into prevention, but you went into uh, less of a field worker role as more of an administrator role. How did you really figure that that was the, the route for you? Yeah, that is a great question. And I don't know. It's, it's it, I have a, it, I don't know if I have the best answer for it because in short, I kind of just stumbled into it. Um, so, so what happened was I, I knew that I wanted to go into public health. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to do more health promotion stuff. And my, my initial thought and background was really on um, stress reduction, um, really supporting uh, suicide prevention, uh, the, uh, general mental health promotion stuff. I also really loved the college student population. So I knew that's who I wanted to work with. And I thought I was going to leave and, uh, or, uh, graduate college and work on a college campus doing health and wellness programming. Uh, and I did that for a very little bit and then, um, which I absolutely loved, um, but I, I felt like I needed a, a more permanent position, um, because the position I have, I happened to have at the time wasn't, wasn't a permanent, um, position. And I found, um, a job description or posting for the Michigan Higher Education Network Coordinator. I knew very little about substance misuse prevention or substance use disorders at the time outside of the, the little program we would do on, on, um, responsible drinking or alcohol prevention that we did on campus. Uh, but the opportunity to be able to uh, work in an adjacent field, um, you know, in, in substance misuse prevention, uh, very closely aligns with the, the mental health um, and health promotion stuff. 
uh, as well as working with that population that I, I absolutely love. And so I applied for the position and was accepted. Uh, I started nearly seven years ago and I cannot believe it was so, you know, time has just flown by. Um, but seven mm -hmm. years ago, I started at Prevention Network uh, and kind of, you know, learned the similarities, the differences and and fell in love with the field of prevention. And I haven't looked back. So, yeah. No, in fact, right before the pandemic, I believe you were named Preventionist of the Year. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. What does that even mean? I've never even knew that that was a I'm glad that you got it, but I'd never heard of that before. Yeah, so that was that was really exciting and something very unexpected. So I got into the um, the role as the Michigan Higher Education Network or my hen coordinator because we we use acronyms for everything and it just makes yeah welcome <laughs> to the the field of prevention. So I was mm -hmm. the my hen coordinator. And I, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to help support. I wanted to, you know, make my mark and kind of figure out what's truly needed and, and how could I best utilize my time. <clears throat> and in 2018, Proposal 1 was passed in November, uh, which legalized cannabis in the, uh, for, for adults, those 21 and older, uh, in the state of Michigan. And schools were spinning and trying to figure out, you know, we have this young adult population. Um, the typical college student is between uh, 18 and 24 years old. So they're kind of split half and half as far as, you know, um, under that age and over that age. Uh, we have federal guidelines that are saying that cannabis is illegal um, at the federal level, but at, at the state level, it's legal. Um, and so what messaging, how do we kind of communicate this uh, to college students? And so I started working on a cannabis prevention toolkit, really guiding colleges and universities through what does policy look like? What does it mean when it's legal at the state level, but illegal at the federal level? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean for federal funding? What's the messaging? Uh, our, our cannabis um uh, dispensaries able to promote on college campuses um, or or share messaging, um, put ads in the, the school paper, things like that. Are students allowed to use on campus or do they have to go across the street? How are we going to coordinate this with police uh, both on and off campus? And so there were a lot of discussions that were had. I reached out to my friends in Colorado, in uh, Washington, and in uh, California who had already kind of started some of these discussions and were kind of figuring the, these things out. Um, and there were even questions like, how do we even dispose of cannabis that we find in, in the residence halls? Um, <laughs> because there were some legal implications with that. And, and one attorney will say one thing and another attorney. And so it was, and, and what does it mean if it was, uh, there, there was a whole host of, of questions that were flooding. And so um, I created this toolkit really to help those professionals kind of work their way through some of that. <clears throat> and that really picked up. I had no idea um, how how impactful it was going to be. I, I'm glad it was useful for people. Um, I got another email today about uh, somebody who was working on uh, another state who's working on revising that that toolkit because it's now a little outdated being 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a result of, of that and some of the work that I had been doing and really growing that that network uh, that was, was instrumental. And uh, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services uh, kind of saw the work that I was doing and wanted to recognize it. So at the State Substance Use Disorder and Co-occurring um, Disorder Conference, uh, they they honored me. And I, I had learned about the uh, recognition maybe a week beforehand in the office. And I think I was still so new that I didn't realize what it meant. Or maybe it's just I hadn't processed it until um, the following week because I'm not usually the one who needs to be the center of attention. So um, coming up on stage was a little weird, but it's also, I'm, I'm glad that I am 
able to make a difference and um, really honored to be, you know, one of the, that key person who, who was awarded uh, for the year of 2019. It's a huge honor and I'm very proud of it. I think you should be, but to continue, to continue on the surprising journey of Louise, <laughs> you become in 2020, the interim executive director of prevention network. Yes. Uh, how long had you been at prevention network at that point? Four years, four years. I know. How long have you been out of school at that point? Uh, four and a half years. And you are interim ED of a statewide organization. Yeah. Right before the pandemic. Talk to me a little bit about what's going through your head in 2020. I think my board lost their mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, uh, you know, that was an interesting time frame. Uh, I think the organization at the time was, was struggling. Um, funding wasn't where uh, we were hoping it was going to be. And uh, there were a lot of, you know, we were just starting the pandemic. Nobody knew what was going on. I had an intern send me a, or share with me. I asked how, how they were doing and processing things. And they said, well, I'm going off to grad school and I'm getting different emails every week with new updates that are conflicting. It's like the school has no idea what's going on. And I said, I'm going to let you in on something. Nobody has any idea what's going on. We are in week like three of the pandemic. and. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think any of us realized, um, you know, the the true impact. I think we we had some ideas as public health professionals, um, you know, that that there would be long term implications, but um, the true extent is is still being you know uncovered. So uh, I think there was a lot happening, and uh, I remember stepping into an interim kind of management day-to-day -day operations um, manager uh, in in May. And over that time frame, uh, the board was looking at hiring somebody in. They were conducting interviews. And I would debate on putting my name into the hat or maybe I just don't want this. I'm not ready for this. Um, you know, in, in, in that kind of battle. Uh, and our board chair at the time reached out to me and said, I think you would be really fantastic at this. Uh, I wasn't sure if you had the experience and the, the skill set in order to do it. Uh, and we were hoping for somebody who had a few years of uh, executive director uh, experience um, to, to step into this role because we know that the, that's what the organization really needs. Uh, but you know what, you might be a really good fit because you know the organization, you know the mission, um, and and you know the direction. You have an idea of what the, the direction the organization needs to go. And so um, after a lot of thought and going back and forth, I decided to to try. Um, and I thought it was better to, to fall flat on my face than to not try at all. And so we decided to give it a chance and uh, was interim for about a year. In that time, um, because I don't slow down and I have all of the fun ideas spinning uh, and definitely take on more than I can handle, um, I I decided to to kind of get us started with a strategic plan, and we did a lot of uh, board development, leadership development. I tried reaching out to everybody I could to learn as much as I could in as short a time frame as I could. Uh, and it was a, a complete whirlwind. There were definitely tears. There was laughter. There was sleepless nights. Um, I learned so much. I have some really close, valuable friends that I've gained in the process. And I am so thankful that I took that position. The board gave me a chance. And I think uh, we have all surprised each other in where we are now at Prevention Network. <laughs> so to, to kind of like bring some stuff full circle, your, your uh, preference of working in high stress situations through the anxiety that you carry 
-hmm. was beneficial in this regard. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, <laughs> so going forward, when you say that um, you got a lot of support, where did you get the most support from other than other than family? Because family, mm -hmm. you know, they're always going to give you the support. But where did you find the support being this brand new young executive director in the state or even in Lansing? You know, Paul, I love that question um, because absolutely. And we all kind of need that that support and that mentorship. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely from my family, um, my, my partner is really big into leadership and we've got bookcases upon bookcases of uh, for leadership development. And so reading those. Uh, but we also had a, a former board uh, board member uh, who who had to step off the board for uh, just life got in the way and there's too many things on on their plate. Um, but they said, hey, Louise, and this is who I actually I remember calling them at the airport and saying, should I take this position? Should I not take this position? What do I do? And we kind of talked through it together. And they reached out and said, if you take this position, it's ultimately up to you. But if you take this position, I will mentor you. We will set up uh, calls. You can reach out to me. And to this day, um, this person has been my mentor. Uh, they now live in Texas. Uh, um, but it just knowing and having experience as a board member for our organization, as well as an executive director themselves at a few different organizations, really, really helped me out um, and, and kind of taught me the ropes, calm me down when I was frantic or unsure of next steps. Um, has been a listening ear and and has provided support and guidance on on where to go, what to do, um, in a whole host of situations. And so I've tried to be mentors to others because I know how valuable that is, and I would not be where I am today without uh, this person as my mentor. That's that's incredible. Now we're running low on time because I but I feel like. I haven't really got to half the questions <laughs> I wanted to get to, which is okay. Um, because you brought up some things I didn't know I was going to talk about, which is awesome. This is how this works. So first of all, real quick, out of all those leadership development books that you have and read, which one is your favorite? Oh, that is a tough question. That is a really tough question. You know what? There was a book and I'm going to look it up um, because I want to make sure I get the the name right. Um, I, it, part of it depends on like when I read it too yep. and what really resonates. Right. Um, uh, one of my more recent ones that I've really liked, uh, How to Work with Almost Anybody. And that is by uh, Michael Bungay Stainer, I think is, is how you pronounce his name. Um, Originally, he's from Australia, but has some some great messages. I think he also he had a coaching book that hit the New York Times bestseller, um, but really great as far as communication styles and uh, how to better communicate and work and build relationships with others. Nice. And uh, final question is, what do you do to escape? What what is what is one thing that you do to get your head uh, out of the nonprofit world just for a little bit? Yeah, that's another great question. I don't know if I do a great job of escaping all the time. My staff would probably say yeah. otherwise, um, <laughs> but I try. Um, I have a great group of friends, and so uh, we ha play board games sometimes. Uh, we go to the movies every Sunday night, and so really maintaining some of those boundaries, going out for dinner with them, uh, and making sure that that I am still staying connected to to my friends outside of uh, the nonprofit world <clears throat> and the work at Prevention Network. And then my my partner and I love to travel, and so. In February, we got back from a trip to Australia, and we try to try to go explore uh, whenever we can. This weekend, we're headed to Buffalo, New York, so mm. always on the move. Nice. Well, that's kind of been your theme for this episode. <laughs> so that brings us to the end, but how do people 
uh, get in touch with you if they want to talk to you a little bit more about you and uh, what you do? Yeah, so people can always reach me uh, through either our, our phone number at Prevention Network, 517-393-6890, and uh, just go through the uh, auto receptionist for uh, Louise, and, and you can get a hold of me. Otherwise, my email, louiseh at preventionnetwork.org, so L-O-U-I-S-E-H, at preventionnetwork.org. And then there's always our website. So mm -hmm. www.preventionnetwork.org. And so either way, I'm pretty accessible. That's great. Well, thanks, Louise. This was a great conversation that went a direction. I didn't know it was going to go. I thought it was like, oh, it was great. So great. Thank you for being on, on the podcast. Thank you for having me. All right. And thank you all again for taking some time to listen to this program and don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. So, but if there's someone that you know of that you would like to hear about with their journey, please email us at mission control at unaduce.com. And if this is your first time listening to this, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a review. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time in the control center. And that's it. Thank you.